Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the core problem for Magic the Gathering. I was reading a something that Mero wrote on Tumblr. So Mero is Mark Rosewater. He is the official spokesperson of Magic the Gathering. And I've been very critical of him in the past, and I'm going to remain critical of him in this video. He is very left-leaning. He has certain political and ideological beliefs that I don't personally agree with, but let's put that aside and let's talk pure numbers, pure finance. We have a buy box promo as of this recording, almost $40. Now, yes, I know if you live in Europe, it's a lot cheaper, but in the US, the price is dictated by a guy whose name is Saffron Olive. And yeah. So what is the solution to the problem? The problem being that this buy box promo is only available at if you buy a box at a local game store. The solution, according to Mero, is to do nothing. And this has been the solution for many, many problems. And that's why the whole unsleeved media thing kind of doesn't make any sense because it actually was them taking a very extreme action an action that has never been levied on Alex Bercini and has not even been le levied on someone who had plead to sexual assault. So Merrill says that more Nexus of Fate printed than any other core 2019 mythic, and that is his solution. So again, let me reiterate the problem. The problem is one of the cards that you need four of to play one of the most popular decks I don't know if the deck is the best deck, but it is a very entertaining deck and the price does not lie. The expected value of core 2019 is dismal. It's about $62 and dropping. So the promo card is almost worth what your expected value is. And if you removed all the reprints like Crucible and you would really have a terrible set. Uh, they did a very poor job, and the only thing that is keeping this set alive, and core sets in general are quite weak, and that's why they got rid of it previously. Magic Origins was supposed to be the last core set, but then they changed their mind again, with no data. So, the problem is, you have a card that is exclusive in some way, and people cannot get to it unless they either buy a box for $100, some places selling it for 140 MSRP, or you buy online for $35, which feels bad for buy a box promo. It just feels bad. Now, the question, why the buy a box promo can't be a masterpiece alike of any card, even a powerful one that can be normally obtained in packs? This is a really reasonable answer. Why, cannot, why can you not open this in a pack? make the buy a box a masterpiece and people would love it. It can still have a very high value. The goal of the buy a box is to sell boxes at the local game stores. It just being in a, the product doesn't accomplish that goal, but it does. It completely does. Also, I want to stress something that Blake said on the magic stream today. There are more copies of Nexus of Fate than there are printed versions of any core 2019 Mythic rare card. So um, he's saying that Nexus of Fate is rarer than a rare, but not as rare as a Mythic. If you go back in time, this is the guy who screwed up the magic economy because he is the guy who invented Mythics. Why do we even have a mythic? Why do we even have an expedition? It makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. If you look at other card games, uh, Tour Guide of the Tour Guide was a very popular card in Yu-Gi-Oh. They printed that as a common eventually. They had star printings. It it comes in all types of rarities. The same can be said for Pokemon. There's hyper rares, full art rares, and just regular ones. The concept that this card can only be obtained in a certain way to help the local game store, which I'm so sure there's so 
adamant about helping, right? Uh, it's so it's so important for them to help local game stores with all the Walmart product that's coming out. I was watching this channel on Steve's MTD MTG, and he opens more Walmart and Target stuff than he opens stuff from a local game store. And I'm not sure, but I think he owns a local game store. But people want to watch the mystery packs in Walmart, the mystery packs in Target. If you had a one to one comparison, they are out. The Walmart products are going to mystery cubes. They're going to outperform uh, just from the views. I mean, if you go on his channel and you compare it to a regular booster box and you compare it to the Walmart hauls that he's doing, the Walmart hauls have a much, much wider appeal and more views. And yet, and there's also, uh, what is it, a mystery pack of a planeswalker? There's so, there's so many of these mystery packs that are exclusive to Walmart and Target, and it's... These are very popular casual items that local game stores would love to carry at a reasonable price. Uh, we, nor we don't normally talk about how many we print of a card, but Blake publicly clarified this because there is a misconception that Nexus of Fate is far rarer than it actually is. The price doesn't lie. I mean, here's... The problem is the card is too expensive. The solution that is offered is, oh, guess what, guys? It's not that rare. Has that actually changed the price of the card? No, the card is still what it is. The only way the card goes down is if people play with it less. I made a video when Nexus of Fate was first released and it was very clear to me this card could cause trouble. And any card that says take an extra turn, yes, that is a card that people are going to want. And it was pre-ordering at $30. And I was like, oh man, that's that's really high for buy a box. And it actually went up in price. I mean, that's how insane this card is. Is Today, it is more valuable than it was when it pre-ordered. And very few cards in Magic are like that. Very few. So, I know what the answer is. I know why he's saying this he cannot acknowledge the secondary market otherwise magic becomes gambling and you're gambling to win your packs or a gamble right it's a loot crate of some type and this is the problem with the coast they do not acknowledge the problem directly they make this kind of very vague and nonsensical argument it's because they cannot acknowledge the secondary market the same with sexual predators they cannot acknowledge well, they actually did make a reference to background checks, but in a very, okay, it's just storage full. But they cannot acknowledge it for legal reasons. They cannot acknowledge pay wa wa wages for judges because that would open a can of worms. That would open Pandora's box. They're treating people as if they're idiots. The core problem is very simple. The solution is very simple. Print more of this card. Print more of it. Uh, make it uh, a game day promo. Make it a, a second game day. Put it in a mystery pack of some type. Put it in your showdown packs. Maybe you cannot get it in a regular booster pack, but you want people to go to the local game store and they can do showdowns. There's so many. Uh, making a Friday Night Magic promo. That's a, definitely a great way to get people to go out and show up for the stores. So... The logic of, oh, this is the only way that we can, uh, this is the only way that we can have people buy boxes is incorrect. And I don't know, I mean, he should know better. Uh, he, I mean, it doesn't take a genius to realize that something is really wrong with, um, with this card and how it's being distributed. So even if there are more of this card out than a mythic, Typically, you're not going to need four mythics for a deck, right? Maybe you need two, maybe you need four. I mean, you can make the argument that Scarab God and all these cards would come better as in fours. But when a card wants you want to take multiple turns, you need four of it. The whole concept of mythics, I mean... This is the guy I blame for why magic is so messed up. 
the, the concept of a mythic is just a money grab. We didn't have mythics when I grew up. Like, is it a surprise that all the good cards are mythics? No. Uh, that's the way that... I mean, it used to be you open a box, you can at least get one or two of the cards you're looking for. Now you have a point-free chance of getting that mythic you want. Um, it, it's very sad, and it's all of this guy's fault. Um, whatever this guy has done, he has not done a good job. Uh, he invented the mythic, and that was that was the point in time in our gaming time where uh, magic got really greedy, and it never looked back. We even have a foil mythic called Expeditions. That was a terrible concept. Anyway, bye guys.